Welcome back. This is the fifth video in the series that deals with calculations involving uh, equilibrium chemical reactions and it's part of the playlist that deals with chemical equilibrium. Now in this particular uh, video what I want to do is uh, step up and deal with uh, the next complicated type of problem in this area and that's the one where um, you're provided with uh, either partial pressures or molarity concentrations for all the species that are in a particular uh, chemical reaction. And the example I'm going to use is shown here at the top of the screen. And you can see that um, we're, we're putting into a reaction mixture uh, one molar Br2, one molar Cl2, and one molar B BrCl. What makes this problem more complicated than the last ones that we worked on is the fact that because concentrations of each of the species have all been combined in the same reaction mixture there's no way to just glance at this and know which way equilibrium is going to shift so what we're going to have to do uh, in order to calculate the equilibrium concentrations of each of these components is first we're going to have to use some kind of method to figure out which way the reaction is going to shift once we know which way the reaction is going to shift to get to equilibrium, then we can solve for the equilibrium concentrations using uh, an ICE table or in, in, the, in the case of my, my classrooms, we would use um, the box. So how are we going to figure out which way this reaction is going to shift? So what I want to do first is draw your attention to the equilibrium expression, which by now we're pretty used to drawing. So for this one, the Kc is going to be equal to, to uh, BrCl, concentration BrCl raised to the second power divided by concentration Br2 times concentration Cl2. Okay, and this is literally a ratio, and I'm going to use an arrow here so that... Um, I'm not indicating that these two things are exactly equal, but what I want to do is provide the viewer with something that makes it easier to understand what's going on here. So I'm going to write products divided by reactants. And, and basically that this relationship here that I'll, I'll bracket in red is what equilibrium expressions actually mean. But the reason I say these two things are not equal is because this expression, the one bracketed in red, is not compensated for the coefficients. But we can loosely consider an equilibrium expression to be the ratio of products to reactants for a particular chemical reaction that, that's at equilibrium. Um, because if you think about it that way, it's easier to understand what equilibrium means. So for example, if we write this ratio for this reaction, right? the Kc for this is 1.11 times 10 to the minus fourth. And if I take one over this value, and you can do this on your calculator. So if I take one over this value, I get the following ratio where, where one is divided by 9,000 and nine. So essentially for this chemical reaction, the one that I have as an example that we're using here, um, literally, its equilibrium constant says that at equilibrium, for every single product that we have in the reaction mixture, there's going to be 9,009 reactants. That's the reality for this chemical reaction under normal circumstances. And what I mean by that is that if we were to combine the Br2 and the Cl2 together in a reaction flask and let it come to equilibrium. This, this is the ratio that you're going to find. Now, what makes this problem different is that we've combined concentrations of all three things in the same reaction mixture. So at the moment, we don't know where we are relative to this ratio. And so what we need to do is figure out a way that, that we can determine where we are relative to this 1 over 9009 ratio. And so what we're going to do is we're actually go going to write a, an expression that is identical to the equilibrium expression, except that we're literally going to plug in 
the initial v values um, th that we have been given for this particular example. And I'm going to call this arbitrary ratio Q. And we're going to write Q the same way we write an equilibrium expression, except that we're going to plug in initial concentrations. So I'm going to write one molar here, quantity squared, for the BRCL. And that's going to be over one molar for the BR2 times one molar for the CL2. The ratio equals one. Now, what, what does this number mean? All right, Q is represented exactly the same way that we represent KC. So we can write the same kind of relationship, meaning that the one actually is a reference to this ratio, products divided by reactants. Okay, and the fact that it's one means that the ratio is one over one. So where the problem stands at the moment where we have, in this reaction vessel, we've combined one molar Br2, one molar Cl2, and one molar BrCl. We have a ratio right now in that reaction vessel of literally one product to every reactant. And what needs to happen is we need this ratio here to shift back to this one here. So what are we going to what are we going to do to accomplish that? Well, the ratio this ratio here I'm going to circle it is going to have to grow in the de, in the denominator. The denominator is going to have to be bigger. So that means this reaction is going to have to shift to the left. It's going to have to shift back this way in order to to arrive at this ratio that's 1 over 9009 or in essence this reaction will have to shift to the left in order to meet the criteria that the ratio of products to reactants will equal Kc, which is 1.11 times 10 to the minus fourth. Now, this concept that I introduced here, this Q thing, is called the reaction quotient. And Q is written by the same rules as K. So in other words, for, the, the B, B, uh, for this particular reaction, we would write under normal circumstances, this is what we're going to write. And I'm using regular parentheses here because we are not at equilibrium. Okay, these are non-equilibrium concentrations, and I'm going to emphasize that. So this is non-equilibrium. non-equilibrium. Now, most of the time, the student, when they encounter these kinds of problems, of which you're going to encounter a lot of them, I'll tell you that right now, um, usually these non-equilibrium concentrations are going to be what we call initial concentrations. They're going to be initial concentrations. So the problems that you're going to be given are going to be a lot set up a lot like the one that we're uh, currently working on here, meaning that they're going to provide you with either partial pressures or molarity concentrations of all the species that, that are in the chemical equation and then they're going to ask you to find the, the equilibrium concentrations of all the components where step number one is going to be is going to be to figure out which way this reaction uh, is shifting okay so um, and what we learned here just taking you through the rationale was that the reaction needs to shift to the left. So when we we draw our ICE table or the box as I call it, then we're going to have our values um, shifting to the left. All right. Now, before we get to that point, though, what I want to do is just stipulate what we learned here. So we can say from this example that when Q is greater than K as a rule, then the reaction shifts left to get to equilibrium. All right, and then from this, there's two other parameters here. If Q had been equal to K, so in other words, if I'd gone through here and uh, I'd, I'd run the calculation like I demonstrated to you here, and 
instead of getting 1, we had gotten 1.11 times 10 to the minus 4th, then we know we would already be at equilibrium. And we'd be done. There would be no further calculations uh, to complete. Then the obviously, well, hopefully it's obvious, the other option that we have here is a situ situation where when you calculate the Q value, that you end up with a Q value that is um, less than K. And in this circumstance, you have exactly the opposite scenario than what I described up here. So when Q is less than K, the only way that that can happen is if there is, uh, and maybe I'll just write it, write it in here because we didn't actually do that example. It's a situation where the reactant concentration is far greater than the product concentration. And the net result of that is that the reaction uh, must shift to the right. And this is consistent with the, the examples that we've done up, up to this one. And, and the reason I say that is because in those examples, we, we started out with um, concentrations of reactants, but we had situations where there were no products. And um, if you go back into those examples and you plug in, you calculate Q, you'll notice that for the numerator uh, in those cases, uh, the numerator is zero, and in each case, the, the Q is um, less than K, and the reaction had to shift to the right, which, which is the way we solve those particular problems. All right, so um, with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and close this video, and we'll do the actual calculations um, in the next video.